If you watched part one in this series of videos, we discussed how to choose a network attached storage device or a NAS for your creative environment. So in this video, we're gonna look at how to choose between QNAP's QUTS Hero and the QTS file system for your NAS. Hey everyone, I'm Mike from the Media Man Studio Services, and on our channel, we try to bridge that gap between the creative content and the technical requirements. Today's technical requirement is, as we're gonna look at how to choose an operating system or a file system for the NAS in your creative environment. So before I get to that, I'd like to remind everybody, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit notifications. There's only about 2% of the people that are actually viewing my videos are actually hitting like and or subscribing. So it'll help grow the channel and more people have access to videos like this when they're looking for equipment for their studios. For anybody looking for the setup process, they can skip directly to part three of this video series where I'll be walking you through the methods of setting up all the storage pools. But I recommend that you watch this video so you can get some information on choosing the best file system for your NAS in your creative environment. So once you've decided on what QNAP NAS storage device you're gonna be purchasing and the capacity or amount of storage you need, plus your bandwidth requirements, the type of network connections that you need, and the type of drives that you're gonna be installing into your NAS device, you need to look at how you're going to set up your storage device. And QNAP has always had an easy setup GUI to walk you through the entire process. You don't need to be an IT administrator just to set up a powerful storage device like this one. The first decision you need to make when you're setting up your NAS is what operating system or file system you need for your creative workflow. For my workflow, I'll be using it for video production. So I'll be editing video files directly from the storage device itself. So I need high speeds, sustained data transfers, as well as a large amount of storage. But for animation and visual effects workflows, the requirements are a little different. No single artist is actually hitting the NAS device all the time or trying to access files to it constantly. Animation and visual effects are more of a random read and write workflow. And if your studio set up an automated pipeline, it's most likely using database servers to control versions of files, access to textures, as well as assets for your productions. Now these database and asset texture files might actually live on a NAS device itself, but this type of workflow requires high IOPS or input output requests per second. This is a much different workflow than video editing production that requires high transfer speeds for sequential read and writes. But the good news is, is that the TBS H1288X can handle both of these types of workflow. You can set up the NAS for fast sequential read and writes for video production or high IOPS for random read and writes for animation and visual effects. It just depends on how you're gonna set up your file system and the drives that you use to deal with the data flow and the speed of access to the data on the NAS storage device itself. So when you first start up your QNAP NAS or the startup process itself, you'll have to decide what operating system you're gonna use. So let's look at the two different operating systems offered by QNAP and see how we can best utilize these different operating or file systems. There's QUTS Hero or a ZFS file-based system and the QUTS or the original QNAP operating system. Both of these systems have their pros and cons. Both systems offer snapshots so you can restore previous versions of files and the ability to install and run virtual machines like Windows 10 or Linux directly from the NAS device itself, as well as have utilities for FTP and remote access, media players, and security utilities. And you can also do system backups for computers on your network. The QUTS Hero, uses a ZFS-based file system. ZFS was originally developed by Sun Microsystems for their Solera systems in about 2001. But in 2010, the project became open source, and just recently, QNAP has been offering it as a file system for their NAS devices. ZFS is a great file system for animation and visual effects storage. It offers great speeds for random file access and includes inline data compression as well as deduplication to reduce the amount of storage required. And in my opinion, QUTS Hero offers better configuration options than the original QTS operating system. ZFS takes way less time to set up and create RAID pools, and ZFS uses multiple levels of data caching that can be used across many different types of media. But on the other hand, QNAP has been developing its QTS operating system for many years. It's very robust and trusted in the data storage market. QTS offers tiered storage, and that's something that ZFS doesn't support. So I can use this tiering to actually move my current projects over to the fast SSD drives and then archive all my completed projects to the slower SATA drives. QTS also offers the same data caching that ZFS does on different storage media types for random file access to increase IOPS. And QNAP is about to release version five of the QTS operating system with updated security and performance improvements. So what operating system or file system are you gonna choose? And I think that really depends on what your workflow is gonna be. So for my NAS, I'm gonna be doing video production. So let's look at the bandwidth requirements first. The TVS H12888X NAS has 12 bays in total for installing drives. 
There are eight 3.5 inch, six gig SATA dry bays that I can install your standard large high capacity spinning drives into. But I can also choose to install SSD drives and all of the drive bays. But SSD drives are usually a smaller capacity like one to eight terabytes, where SATA drives or spinning hard drives can have a capacity up to 20 terabytes at a much lower cost. There's also two M.2 drives internally in the NAS itself that I can use to install two MBME drives. And I can use those for read and write cache. So I do have a selection of drive types to work with when setting up my NAS storage. I need a lot of storage capacity for my video production. So I think I'll be installing six of these Seagate Exo SATA drives. They're high capacity spinning drives, as well as five of the fast SSD drives. And that'll leave me one slot left that I can use for a hot spare. And I'll have more on what hot spares are later in this video series. But I did want to take a minute and discuss these SSD drives. The very nice people over at XSN were kind enough to supply me with these SSDs. These are rated for the demanding workflow that you would use in something like a NAS storage device. If you're building a NAS, you want to use enterprise class SSDs and not consumer grade SSDs. SSD drives are rated on two factors, speed and write cycles, or how many times you can write to the actual NAND flash themselves before the drive will start giving you errors. Exocent SSDs are actually designed for the demanding data center environment and are a great choice for NAS storage device, offering both great speed as well as a five-year warranty on the drives themselves. So when looking at performance of an SSD drive like this one, I get about 550 megabytes a second for transfer speeds. But when I RAID 5 of them together in a RAID 5 configuration, I can get a sustained data transfer speed of about 2100 megabytes a second. And when I'm talking about sustained read and write speeds, I'm referring to multiple video files, maybe 4 to 8K video files, playing back at the same time without dropping any frames. But for the slower SATA drives, they only have a read and write speed on a single drive of about 250 megabytes a second. And when I RAID them together in RAID 6, I get a sustained transfer speed of about 700 to 800 megabytes a second. So I'm using RAID 6 because that will allow me to actually lose two hard drives or have two hard drive failures and still not lose any data. So for my setup, it makes a lot of sense to use the SSD drives for all the read and write work and use the slower high capacity SATA drives for all the long-term storage. So using a SATA and SSD or mixed media NAS is more cost effective and it can supply faster transfer speeds without having to purchase a high cost all SSD NAS storage. But one of the things I don't want to do is have two pools of storage in my device itself and have to manage those two separate pools. I want to have one large pool and have the device itself manage the data and where it sits in the file system. And this is where both tiering and data caching management can offer a great solution. So let's take a quick but simple look at the differences between tiered storage and data caching. Both of these options offer a way for the NAS to actually move files to the fastest drive when data is requested by a user. So when frequently used data is requested, it's using the fastest drives to deliver the data. So when you're using data caching and a user requests file from the storage device, the NAS looks first to see if there is a copy of the data in one of the many levels of cache. Cache can be stored on RAM, NVMe, or SSD drives, or even SAS. And if the data is in the cache, it is transferred very quickly. But if it's not, the data is copied from the slower drives into the cache and then transferred to the user itself. The important term here is copied. Cache is a copy of the original data that's stored on the other drives in the system. The data will remain in the cache until it's considered old, and then it gets deleted or flushed from the cache. But the original file on the slower drives is still available for the next time there's a data request. If the files in the cache are changed, modified, or updated, then the data is written to the slower storage or the SATA drives to reflect these new changes. So the QTS hero caching works really well for random I.O. or input-output requests, or read and writes that are required for data center applications, 3D animation, or even VFX pipeline environments. But I found that the tiered storage in the QTS operating systems offers a higher bandwidth for sequential read and writes of large 4 and 8K video file. Tiered storage works sort of the same way as caching, but it's not a copy. The data is actually physically moved from the slower drives to the faster drives when a user requests data. This data will stay in these faster SSD drives until it's considered old, and then it's actually then moved back to the slower SATA drives until the next time the data is actually requested or a user is actually requesting data. With QTS, you can actually manage folders and decide which folders you want to have on the faster tiers and which ones you want to have in the slower tiers. Like graphics and sound libraries that you don't need anymore, you can actually leave those on the SATA drives or the slower capacity drives permanently. But you can also leave data on the faster drives permanently if the files are used very frequently. 
like your active video projects, they can just stay in the faster tier until you've completed the projects. Tiered storage and caching are both very flexible. One of the main benefits of using tiered storage over caching is the fact that tiered storage uses all of the drive capacity to create one large pool. But caching data is a copy of the original data and is stored in two locations on the NAS, taking up more drive space. Let me explain this a little more. Tiered storage is not a copy of the data. All the drives are added to the storage pool. So if you have 10 terabytes of slower SATA drives and you have four terabytes of fast SSDs, you'll get a total of 14 terabytes of storage. Remember, data is moved, not copied. So all of the drive space can be added to the storage pool. But as I explained earlier, caching is a copy of the data. So if you have 10 terabytes of slower SATA drives and you have four terabytes of SSD, you only get 10 terabytes total storage for that pool. This four terabytes of cache is a temporary pool or a copy of the original data that lives on the slower SATA drives. So for my video production requirements, I found QTS offered faster bandwidth with the tiered solution option, but creating standard RAID 6 stripe sets on the QTS takes a long, long time. And my drive setup took about 15 hours just to set up the RAID sets. While ZFS offers more configuration options and creating Z pools is really fast, but at the cost of slower sequential write transfers, and ZFS caching is fast for random read and writes, and I'm sure that I can get the same performance you know, out of ZFS, but that would require more drives and an increased cost. But for video editing, I want speed and the large capacity storage pool that's offered with the QTS operating system. So I'm gonna set up my NAS with tiered storage, ensuring that I get the fastest transfer speeds to all the artist workstations. And then I will move all my older projects over to the high capacity, lower cost SATA drives for long-term storage and archive. So you may have different requirements for your NAS storage, but I find that this is the best configuration for my video editing requirements. Choosing a file system or operating system would depend on how you want to set up your file system that best suits your workflow. Using caching or tiering will depend on your data usage requirements. And both of these options have the same issue of what happens when the cache or fast tiered gets full. Then you're still actually requesting data from the slower SATA drives. So no one cost-effective solution is actually perfect. So, okay, that brings us to the question of the day. If you're using QNAP storage, what file system are you using? Maybe sound off in the comments section below and share some of your experiences with the community. And remember, I do respond to all the comments on my channel. So before we go, I wanted to thank QNAP Malaysia for supplying me with this TBS H1288X NAS. It's got enough speed and storage capacity for any animation, visual effects, or video production house. It's a great device and I highly recommend it. I also again wanted to thank XSN for sending me over these enterprise class SSD drives. They also make a CFAS card for optimized performance and truly uncompromised cinematography storage. So you should record your next video production on XSN Media. And please don't forget to check out part three of this video series where I'll run through the entire process of setting up storage pools and applying fast SSD drives to the slower SATA drives. And in future videos, I will be adding NVMe drives for caching for even faster read and write speeds. Then I'll be setting up a hot spare as well as, as expanding my data storage pool. And I'll also be looking how to set up remote access with other file transfer utilities using virtual machines on the QNAP device itself. So thanks for watching. Please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit notifications. Uh, visit the Discord chat server. The link is in the comment section below. And don't forget to check out the other videos on my site. I really enjoyed doing this video for you and I'll see you in the next one.